Hello everybody and welcome back to this week's Day Fishing Adventure. And it is an adventure already, isn't it? Look at this place that we're in. It is some of the most beautiful country I've ever seen. This week's gonna be kind of a sequel to last week's adventure. And if you didn't see that one, go back in. It was the very last video we posted. It was our first ever turkey hunt here on Stay Fishy, and it was a successful one. So go back in and watch that. Tomorrow, my best friend Marlon's showing up for his first ever turkey hunt. We're gonna try to double down and make it two episodes in a row where we're out here living out the land and enjoying this amazing country that we live in. Stick around, this is gonna be an awesome adventure. Tonight's menu is gonna be delicious. We're actually just drove straight from the last video that we made, it was 48 hours living off the land. Tonight we're gonna to be cooking some wild turkey, some looks, and some dried morels that were from last year. So if you guys wanna see this recipe, go back to the last video and check it out. And we'll be cooking some really good recipes tomorrow night too. So this is gonna be a two day trip. Let's get a fire built, let's get to cooking. Look at that. Mmm. was amazing guys you better go back to that episode and check it out this time of night is when the birds go to roost they pick big pine trees like we have right here next to us and as they fly up into them before they fly up into them they get really excited so they'll start gobbling making a bunch of noise and making a bunch of ruckus and it's a great way to locate the birds before you go hunt them in the morning so i just heard two of them gobble two separate ones right behind camp this might turn into a double whammy two videos in a row with the turkey kill my fingers are crossed they sound like they're kind of far away but we can definitely make them to them by sunrise. Let's get a fire going, crawl in bed, get some good night's nice rest. Alright, Tiny, let's go bed. Let's go bed. Oh, 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 God, oh, God. Come here. Here you go. Here you go. Right there. Come here. Here you go. Here you go. Oh, hold on. Here you go. Right here. Here you go. Here you go. All easy. <sighs> Good night, everyone. Good morning, everybody. I don't think you can see me very well. We got a good cup of Joe in hand. And some assholes literally pulled up. You probably can't see them. Whoever you assholes are, your assholes, they literally pull up, pull past our camp, park literally right there, and walk up right here. Bridge are gobbling over here. So it's gonna become a competition to see who has the sexiest voice. Because I'm playing, I don't even care. They're camped on our birds, and we're going after them anyways. It's gonna be an interesting morning. Let's go check it out. Okay, we're in position.
was literally a hundred yards from us. Maybe we got a little too close, but he flew down and I think they just took right off. I don't know, so they could be sitting right over the hill, just strutting in the middle of the field. So we're gonna give it a few minutes. I've heard birds kind of out and about around us. We'll give it about another 20, 30 minutes here. And then we'll move on and see if we can't find another bird to call in. They're definitely here. The woods have gone stone quiet. No gobbles anywhere. I can hear some people calling way off in the distance. I could only hear one shot, but it sounded like it came from a really long ways away. And it sounded like they missed because they shot like four times. It's time to get on foot, start moving around, see if we can't find a hot bird. Okay, we've decided to call off the search. That's not the proper way to hunt turkeys. I like when they come to me, especially when I'm standing at my tailgate. So I just heard back from Marlon. He's about two hours late. Go figure, big surprise. If you guys don't know who Marlon is, he's my best friend. He actually owns the Addicted Fishing Channel um, and the Addicted Fishing brand. So this will be his first turkey hunt ever. Uh, him and I's first turkey hunt ever together. But he's on his way now, he'll be here about 8.15, it's about 7 now, so let's head back to camp, drink some more coffee, get a little food in our belly, get camp packed up, go meet Marlon, let's see if we can't call one in for real. The main thing about the turkey hunting and why I kind of try to stick to the protocol of calling them in like we do uh, is because you stand a really good chance of wounding animals if we just chase them like that. Those birds have definitely been hunted before, definitely been shot at one way or the other and uh, weren't a good option for hunting. So we don't want to push the envelope, chase them down and make a bad shot and not ethically kill the animal that we're after. So we're calling it. Let's go back to camp. Let's get packed up. Oh. Nothing like a reheated cup of joe. And now it's time for the Stay Fishy Munch of the Week. So what we have this week, it's another flavor of the bitch and dip. I think we've used bitch and dip before, but this one is roasted green chili and papita. Absolutely amazing. Hey, uh, bitch and sauce, if you're looking to sponsor somebody, Stay Fishy is now accepting sponsors. And that goes for everybody out there. We've been working on a couple other sponsorships. We're kind of waiting for the page to grow. 
so that we can really get your guys' products out there. But whether you have a cooking company, uh, whether you have pots and pans, whether it's uh, you're an outfitter or anything like that, we're looking for sponsors for Stay Fishy. So be sure to message in. Let us know what you have to offer, and we'd love to work with you guys out there. So Fish and Dip, you're on my radar. What we have here, to go along with the Fish and Dip, we got ourselves some of the La Panzella Cracker. And of course, not to be forgotten, can fish. Yummy. So good. This is how we're doing this. We're going. Ooh, that's close. We're going to do a little dippage. We'll go a nice dip. Got to get a good spread on the dip. Stab in there in that fish. Nice little jalapeno on there too. Beautiful, beautiful early lunch. That is definitely my favorite one of the bitchin' dips yet. It's got a very herby taste. You definitely taste that pepita. And it's nice because it's not too overpowering. It's a real mellow flavor. That is delicious. Gotta give some love to the cameraman. There you go. Well, look who decided to show up. <laughs> This geese got a good fence up so we can see the line. So we're just trying to get further and further away from where there's people. Obviously the big issue this morning was too many other hunters. So we're having to hike a few canyons over. We found some property that's legal to be on. And we think there'll be some untouched birds. So we heard them gobbling. They sound like they're way over there. If we can get up this ridge right here, this is a big flat up top. That's where they're at for sure. See how it's all open too? Yeah, let's do it. I'm dipping it, my bitchin'. Mm. Yep. A little 10 a.m. buffalo chicken strip. All right, the plan is to start moving. We're gonna start bouncing around in different areas that Marlon knows. This is an area that he's a little more familiar than I am with. So, he saw turkeys on the way up here when he came to meet us. These birds, our kaputs, we're done with them. We're on to new and better things. Let's go find some turkeys. All right, new spot, new opportunity. A little covert area. Hopefully there's some turkeys that have not been molested. I didn't, couldn't even really tell that this was the spot we could hunt. That's why we got the local knowledge on our side. Let's find us a bird. Wrong bird. Hey, Jordan. The goose. Are you sure? Is there a pond down there? No, that is a turkey. 100%. Come on. 
come over this way and call up this edge. He's like pretty far. No, there was one that I saw had like a six inch, seven inch beard hanging off of it. We are so stupid, ladies and gentlemen. Both these guys heard a gobble. I didn't hear it. We decided to get up and walk. If I would have known any better. I would have told Marlon no. We sat right there and would have just killed two turkeys. <sighs> stupid. One thing we can do now, let these things walk away. Sneak around, get at a different angle, change calls and see if we can't call them in. We still stand a chance though. That was really dumb. I told you I heard him. Yeah, I shouldn't have let you leave. I didn't. I just didn't believe it. It sounded like goose to me, but they were all gobbling at the same time. Yeah, I heard him twice, dude. Like clear as day. God, that was stupid. Got to the new section. We had one call. Bird gobbled instantly. Let's get set up. Little bastards. You. First tick of the trip. First tick I've seen of the year. Poor Sean. He'll be alright. Alright, see you guys. Uh, nap time. Nap time's over. Now it's time to make this gourmet meal that we've all been talking so much about. I'm gonna be cooking over the fire. Found myself a beautiful little riverside oasis. It's time to get to cooking. Tonight's meal is gonna be cooked over the fire. I'm gonna have a couple pieces of alder that I'm gonna throw on here. It's gonna smoke the fish really nice. And I have a very, very special piece of salmon. It's gonna be a similar recipe to the, what I did a couple of videos ago. I have a beautiful piece of spring chinook that a client of mine caught, and he was nice enough to give me a chunk. So I have a little bit different recipe I'm gonna do with it, some different kind of seasonings on it. But nonetheless, it's gonna go right over the fire. It's gonna get a nice smoky flavor. Time to get it all ready. All right, so like that last video, I'm gonna be cedar planking my salmon, but it's very important when you cedar plank to get that wood wet. This thing's been bouncing around the back of the truck for a couple of days, so I know it's gonna be a little bit dry. I'm gonna get it nice and wet in the river. 
Normally you'd want to let it soak in a bucket of water or something so that it doesn't start on fire. But luckily we got a couple beers in camp. So we'll be able to dump the beer on the, on the wood if it does start to burn. And we're right next to the river. So we'll do what we can to avoid a flare up. But there we go. Our cedar plank's ready. Oh, wow. Does that not look incredible? That is a special thing right there. How delicious. So we're going real simple on this seasoning here tonight. I'm gonna go a little bit of parm gar, a little bit of the tahini, and just a small amount of seasoned salt. Really, there's gonna be so much fat in this fish. I'm probably gonna cover it a little bit with some aluminum foil too to kind of keep that heat in because it is such a big chunk of fish. This was a 21 pound spring chinook, one of the biggest ones I've ever seen. Oh wow, that's good. And then, to go along with the munch of the week, I'm gonna use a little bit of the bitchin' sauce. I'm just gonna do a tiny bit, right like that. Spread it around. Oh God, that looks so good. Wow. Wowzers, McNowsers, as they say. We're ready to cook. So, I got this beautiful squash that one of my best friends, Amanda, gave me out of her garden from last year. And that's the cool part about squash is how freaking long it lasts. I mean, look at that thing. It's just like you picked it out of the garden and it's almost a year old. But we're gonna chop this up into nice slices, nice little cubes. And we're gonna cook this right over the fire next to the fish. Is this a spaghetti squash? It is. Whatever, it'll work. Well, it turns out it was a spaghetti squash, but we'll do our best. As you can see, it has these really stringy strands, but it'll still taste good. I'm gonna chop it up anyways. All right. Normally I'd wanna do a little brown sugar, but we are on the road and have been for a few days, so we don't have any brown sugar. Just this ought to do. You don't have to go too salty on your squash. It's gonna taste pretty good anyways. Over our grate goes. Make sure it's in a nice spot, it's not gonna fall or nothing. This will be an absolutely heartbreaker of a meal to lose over the fire. There we go. Ready. Okay, so one thing I'm gonna do here, which is a trick that I've only used once, I'm gonna do it a little bit differently even this time. Is I'm gonna put some aluminum foil kind of hooded over the fish. And that's gonna hold a lot of that heat in. But I don't want it to touch the fish. So what I'm gonna do, I wanna be able to get that smoke and that heat trapped up and under that fish. So I'm gonna go just like this. Just like that should work. That'll kind of hood that smoke and that heat up and onto the fish, we're good to go. All right, we've added another hood. We added another piece here to block the wind coming so we get more of that heat up on the fish. And this is just a giant piece of Chinook salmon, like I said, so we're going a little bit extra measures to try to get it done quicker. But on goes our squash. Ah, oh, yeah. All right, we're getting a little hot in there. Good thing Coors Light's awfully watered down. <coughs> That'll work. Oh my God, that looks done to me. Let's check it out. Take my hot rocks off. Squash is looking great. Fish is looking, oh my God. If it ain't a freaking piece of art. Holy cripes, look at this. <laughs> that's a, now that's a nice piece of fish. You got the fat kind of rendering out of the sides. Look at that nice smoky crisp on the top there. Let's go ahead and take our squash. I had to try me a little piece, obviously. Line the sides of this with the squash for, for good looks. Oh my God, look at that everyone. 
that's a thing of beauty. It's time to eat. All right, thumbnail's taken. It's time to sit down next to the fire and enjoy this beautiful meal. Oh, oh man, look at this. We'll keep it right over the fire, keep it, keep it warm. Wow, look at this. That is insane. Look at the caramelization from that bitchin' sauce. It's gonna be a bitchin' bite, I can't even talk, I'm drooling. It literally almost tastes like butter. Just look at what's going on here. Incredible. I think Little's into it. He's literally been licking me and bugging me since we started cooking this. Tell me, hurry up, Dad. I want some. Here you go, kid. Here's your skins. Good boy. Yep, me and my dog eat off the same fork. Good boy. Okay, tell him to try the squash. Mm. Oh, nice and tender. Again, not usually the proper way to eat a spaghetti squash. You can see how stringy that is. We'll have to do another spaghetti squash recipe some other time this year because these things are absolutely delicious and I actually have another one at home. Mmm. But a real sweet flavor, even without any sugar on it. Peels right off of that rind. Really complements the fish really well. Combo wombo bite. Get that thing just right. Wow. Now oh, that's living. Too bad Marlon left. He wanted to go watch boxing. Well, what I think today's video proved was you don't always have to be successful to go out and enjoy an incredible day in Mother Nature. We got really close to killing Marlon and I's first turkey together, but we already got one in the freezer. We gotta be grateful for that and the creator for the blessings that we have. Today was incredible, you guys, and I hope you enjoyed this entire adventure. Some of the most beautiful scenery we've seen in a long time. Spring is definitely in the air. There's a lot of things to eat out there, a lot of fun to be had, and I can't wait till next week. So same time, same place, you know where to find us. You all stay fishy, we'll see you out there.